Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. Donna Simpson, Todd Knowles. Todd, I remember back in the day when we were young pups. We were just young pups. And we heard about them old men talking about them storms that come through there. Yeah. We're now the old men, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly to say, I believe you're right. I I don't want to be right there, Todd, but I'm afraid I am. We know this area. We know what's come through there. We know the ones that came through there back in the teens uh, that came through Coronado over on Coronado Golf Course. Uh, The the one that came pretty much there about five to seven years ago. Uh, There was a little one that came back up through Orients in that way. But this time, Todd. Tell me your story. How how, how did you get woken in the night or (laughs) Thursday night? What happened? Well, about uh, a little after eight o'clock, I began getting calls from friends asking if I'm all right. And uh, so I uh, tried to call the PD and you couldn't get through because the, there were so many people calling. So mm-hmm. I called a buddy at the fire department. He said, yes. And we, uh, so we've been hit with a tornado. So I came in immediately. Uh, I called my, my crew in. When I got out of here, Ken and Kelly were waiting on me. I called Ken uh, Unger, and uh, Kelly was waiting on me. So we got in the truck, and we started driving around, assessing some of the damage. I had crews immediately start cutting. We cut throughout the night. Uh, you know, our main priority was uh, to cut out some of the roads so emergency vehicles could get into the houses, check on residents, to so go by and knock on the doors and ask them if they're all right. Uh and I tell you, Dennis, it was uh, it was like driving into a nightmare. When you got out, uh, right after the tornado come through, when you got out, it was eerily dark. I've never seen a darkness the way that as dark as it was. And the smell of pine was it was just overwhelming. I mean, it was just it you know it was just uh, it was overwhelming. And well, Todd, you're you're a guy who's been out I mean, just, just 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 north of here is the Washtenaw National Wilderness Area. Uh-huh. Okay, yes, you've been there. I know you have. And at oh, night, yeah. it's quiet. It's quiet, and it's super dark. But it's not like yeah. that. This but is where the insects like don't I've, even. I've yeah, the birds times. don't even make a racket, right? Yeah, and I mean your insects, your katydids, your crickets. You know, they're usually of a night. You can hear them. Um, mm-hmm. It was just eerily quiet. There's, there was nothing. There was no sound whatsoever. That's uh, the smell of pine, right? Just the smell of pine, yeah. And and we really didn't know how bad it really was until it got daylight the next morning. But 
we had crews that cut throughout the night. And Dennis, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was here in the 2010 tornado. I was here in 2011 tornado. And uh, this one here was worse than, than both of those. Uh, and I've never seen the, the, uh, I've never seen the cooperation from outside entities like we had Thursday night. I mean, we had the, the city of hot Springs road department come in, uh, Garland County road department, Sling County road department, uh, so many outside entities come in and, and that's a testament to our general manager building our relationships back up with, uh, outside sources. And I mean, they were in here right away. You know, where do we need to go? The U.S. Forest Service. They were really? in there. Arkansas Game Fish Commission. <laughs> um, they were all in here. And I went, that, the, the Forest Service in here cutting with it. They had a dozer they were piling, you know, like I said. And then our biggest problem was, uh, you know, your power lines down. We couldn't cross them to get into these roads. Uh, and the power companies, they were they were working hard throughout the night. Uh, at least getting them cut and getting them out of our way to where we could go on going through the road. And, uh, you know, I was on the phone with the superintendent, uh, right away superintendent from energy and from first electric most of the night. Hey, where are you guys going to next? You know, and they would let me know. And that way we'd know where we could or couldn't go. The communication was, was great between us and, the, and, and our uh, electric cooperatives. Um, but yeah, they, uh, it was uh, it was something I don't wish to relive again anytime soon. Uh, well, you know, we, we've was, seen trees knocked down before, Todd. I mean, look, it, it's trees, right? right? This time, you didn't know if you were looking for bodies or not, right? Oh, I, it was it, it was bad. I mean, the amount of trees that were down and and the houses that were just you know trees laid on them, mm -hmm. uh, and just all around them. It was, uh, you know, I had a guy out, uh, came up Friday, worked for the Weather Channel, national. You know, he went all around the country for storms. And, you know, they've seen some bad ones. You know, he was telling me stories, uh, you know, a lot worse than, than this tornado here. But, um, and he told me, he said, you know, this is, he said, I don't believe I've, you know, I've not seen very many places with this many trees that got blown down. And he said, you know, especially without any kind of casualties of, of any kind. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't have any in that, uh, you know, thank the good Lord for that. Well, but I'll and, tell and you I, something, yeah. uh, not to interrupt, but, you know, we're so blessed to live in, in a place like the Village Dennis. I, I'll be honest yeah. with you. It, it, the, the community support in the churches, the way that they, they stepped in and helped I mean, it's, it's just mind blowing. I mean, you, you just need to just sit back and thank the good Lord. You know what? We live in a wonderful, wonderful community where people look out for each other. With wonderful, wonderful people is the point I, I, I pulled up in there right. and you know, I, listen, I'm going to come to shoot. So I heard Kelly say on the radio, they wanted some drone shots. I'm like, I'm there. I'll take, mm -hmm. I'll take care of this. Uh, and I actually thought I could come over some different ways and, and be further away from you guys and not bother anybody. But the fog was, as you can see on some of the pictures we yeah. have here, the, the fog was just so thick that morning, but <clears throat> excuse me, all that said, as, as I started just touring and looking at the stuff, and then I pulled up in the, in the uh, Catholic church parking lot, must've been 80 trucks there. The, the, the parking lot was two thirds full with people with chainsaws. <laughs> The, the, yeah. Most of them didn't know each other and and mm -hmm. they're just trying to help and they're just yeah, trying to help volunteers. And Christy and I, and I just, we interviewed her a little earlier today. We'll have that show shortly. But uh, one of the things, uh, uh, Greg Kirksey at the church at Rock Creek has a, a fantastic quote and uh, <laughs> he uses it in reference to the Bible, but it fits here quite well. His point was uh, building to code seems kind of overkill until you have a storm. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's right. And then all of a sudden, that's it right. seems like a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's that's one of the things that the guy that from the Weather Channel had told me. He said, you know, there would have been a lot more damage, but he said, you can tell that your structures were built properly. 
Uh, and this, really, this is right you know, on top of the Catholic Church here, right here, just literally mm-hmm. below. And and Todd, it, it's hard, and I don't want people touring. I know you don't either, but we had had trees that were ten and twelve feet up, be twenty four inch in diameter, and we're talking oaks. We're not talking pines, and they were mm-hmm. just snapped off like somebody just took yeah. and broke them in half. And I, I, my mouth was just hanging open. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of cleanup ahead of us. You know, we've been working this week getting Blairit cleaned and and getting the soda clean. And by getting clean, I'm saying getting our right away you know, clean back to the tree line, uh, a bunch of brush and, and, and what we could trees. And, and, and we're working uh, possibly next week, the week after, uh, you know, we'll have contractors in here and uh, begin our cleanup work within residential areas. But God, there's just so much of it. There's so much to do, but I, and I was asking Christy, you think we have 10,000 trees down? Oh, yeah. I'd be scared to say that we didn't, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it'll, it'll just blow your mind if you drive through some of these areas. And you know, the thing about it is Dennis, uh, you know, you talk about your cleanup, you know, these trees are very, very dangerous to cut. Yeah. Uh, when you get in areas where there's multiple trees laid on top of one another and they're twisted around and the, by what I say dangerous, you stick your saw in one of them. If it's twisted, it's already in a bind. So therefore, you start a cut in it, it's going to pop. It can kick back on you, throw your saw back on you. Uh, they're very dangerous to cut. Uh, you know, and the staff, I can't say enough about our staff and what they've done and done safely um, and how much they've cut. And we've had we've had some contractors come in and, They've cut some that, you know, they helped us on the soda yesterday, but uh, I just can't say enough about our staff that, that, you know, they worked so hard. They worked all, all night, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, uh, you know, without any injury at all. And, and you know, and I say that, which is remarkable. Yeah. They're supposed to, but I mean, if you've ever cut storm, storm timber, you don't really know what I'm talking about until, you know, I say that there, you know, no injury because you get a group of trees together that's all twisted up and, and they, they're so dangerous to cut. And, and, uh, you know, people, your contractors actually, the insurance goes up the more saw hands they have because really? of the storm timber. Yeah. Because of the storm, storm timber, it's such a liability. Well, uh, and, and it's, it's one thing, you know, you and I go out and we're going to cut a cut a couple of trees in the backyard. Okay, I've got control of where that tree is going to fall. I've got yeah. control of where this tree is going to fall. This is like a, a, a stack of tinker toys that you touch one. Oh, yeah. You don't know where. You know, there, there's there's compression and stress held up in five trees down the road, and I don't even know where it is. But I start cutting this one, and they start popping over there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it, and it kicks back on you. You know, it causes the saw to kick back on you. And it's just, uh, it's just hard. To, it's a mess to cut. It really is. Yeah, no, I got it. I got it. Well, Todd, I can't tell you guys enough for what y'all do. I, and you know, I, I was talking to Bart Langford the other day, and mm-hmm. uh, this is going to be a long road. We're, we're going to have in some of these places where we have thousands of trees down, we're going to have chest high weeds in a couple of days, right? Or in a That's few right. months. That's right? Right. I mean, it that nature's going to come back. That's not the problem. It just ain't going to uh, be as pretty as it is for a while, right? Right. It's going to, it's going to be a lot more open for sure. But uh, did, yeah, did it I, will, it will, it will rebound. I mean, down there where did I hear? Uh, I'm, I'm, go, I apologize. Did I hear somebody no, say it was down, on the ground for eight year for eight miles? I believe that's right. Yeah. Mercy, I'm sorry. Go, and you were saying, if you go down to Soto, and you go uh, past Terlingua, right there where Ponce turns off, mm-hmm. uh, and you look to your right, that was the path of the 2011 tornado. You're going right, through yeah. Andorra subdivision, Sassadon, mm-hmm. and the Soda Boulevard looked just like a forest. I mean, there was, yep. it was, it was, it was just trees everywhere. But that rebounded, is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. And yeah. there's no doubt that you know this year will rebound. It's just going to be a, we're going, we're going to come out of it. It's just going to be a long process. And, I tell you uh, what, uh, the well, main Bart thing said- is going to hurt. Yeah, nobody's hurt. And Bart was saying that there's no way we're going to get all this timber off the ground before it rots. 
No, I, I don't think so. I mean, we're going to hit it hot and heavy. The thing about it is, you got a bunch of private lots. And without permission, we can't get on private lots. Yep, yep. And Bart so, had a great you question. Know. You know, who, whose tree is whose, right? Yeah. Who owns yeah. that tree laying in the front yard? Uh huh. So, uh, you know, we will, though, I think we're working on, on something right now to send out waivers to uh, lot owners, undeveloped lots that, you know, we'll uh, take the logs more or less off of it for you if you'll give us permission. That's basically like cleaning it up. I mean, you're getting the trees off of it uh, where you don't have to. And, uh, you know, if we can get those, we can go in our common areas. Maybe we can clean a bunch of it up. But, you know, as far as, uh, you know, your value of your tree, you've got 120 days uh, for this type of uh, this type of timber. And really? then your value starts going down, yeah. It goes to get 120 blue. days. And that's that's for your valuable, you know. If you wanna, if you wanna try to uh, log it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you've got 120 days for down timber like this, and it starts bluing. What do you think this is going to do long term, Todd? I mean, look, you know. So you and I have been aware for the last decade. You know, uh -huh. uh, you build a forest, you grow a forest. That's wonderful. How do you harvest a forest? How do you maintain a forest? How do you, how do you, you come back in and say, okay, <clears throat> let's do things to make this forest healthier with what we can, because you only have control of the common or did control the common property. We, the POA yeah. do, but, and, and a lot of people don't understand that. Well, why don't we just clear this up? Well, because we don't own those private lots, right? That's right. That's right. We, you know, we don't own the, you know, a bunch of the areas where we can get the trees out, of our common areas and, and other places where it's opened up, they've got seedlings on the ground. I mean, things will grow. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to take it a little while. And when you go to pulling these, these pines out, you know, you're going to be dropping seeds from the, from the tops. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'll naturally replant itself. You know, I've, I've read something about, well, why don't the POA go back through and plant hardwoods? Well, there's already seeds there. I mean, it's seeding itself. The forest will seed mm. itself. And it does uh, every day. You know, this, so, yeah. So you were talking about the Andorra area. And and for those that know, I mean, let's drive roughly past the woodlands and look to the south, as it were, or to the right. southeast. Uh, there's areas there that there's just thickets of pine trees. I mean, thickets. Mm -hmm. It looks like somebody came in and just planted them ever five to ten inches apart. And mm -hmm. that's where it naturally reseeded itself, isn't it, Todd? Right. Yes, yes, and it will. Uh, if you go past Phoenix, look to your right. Look right straight across from Phoenix Drive, and you'll see where the tornado come through 2011. And yep. that's what it looks like now. And, and by you the know, way, we'll, we'll rebound from this. By the way, I love working with you because when you say Phoenix, I know exactly where that is, and there's only two other homeowners in the village. That know where <laughs> yeah. That is. <laughs> you mean Phoenix yeah, or over but... by Petusa? No, no, no. Down by down on Pomisa. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. I, and I tell you what, the, the area that I hate, and it, look, I hate that it has any of it, but DeSoto down to Menorca, that was such a beautiful place, such it a beautiful was. place. But Todd, th man, there, there's there's 20 truckloads of timber in there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. And we're working on that right now. It's just a slow go. But we'll have we'll, we'll get that cleaned up. And, man. you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little different. It's going to be a little more open, but. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're working on that right now. We cleaned up the right of way yesterday, matter of fact. And, uh, you know, we got, uh, later on, you know, we got stumps. We'll, we'll load up and haul out and we'll, uh, we'll clean up in there and maybe, uh, get a forestry mulcher, go through and grind some of the tops up and limbs and, mm -hmm. and, uh, get that looking good again. But yeah, our major arteries, you know, we want, we want that to look, look pretty uh aesthetically pleasing as we can mm -hmm. so we'll go in and we'll we'll clean some of that up it's just gonna be a you know we just gotta ask everybody just please be patient with us this ain't gonna happen overnight uh it's gonna take us a little while and uh but we we are definitely knowledgeable of what needs to be done and we're working on getting it done it's just uh it's gonna take us a little while 
Well, I'll tell you what, Todd, as we wrap up, there's one thing I want to just, I'm, I'm trying to get it down to the, literally the hundred foot level. Uh, you know, Joe Blow has a, has a nice house here in the village. He's had a tree blow over in the backyard. They've cut that up. What's going to happen to that stump? And I'm not talking about the stuff along the main freeway, the, the main roads that we want to have pretty. What's just the natural progression of what's going to happen to that stump? Well, it's probably going to, the stump itself will be left there. It's on common area behind the house, residential areas. Right. And if right. there's any limbs or tops there, you know, if they're slashed down, uh, they're going to rot. You know, if we get the tree out, we leave the leave the top, slash the limbs and stuff. A couple of years, you won't even be able to tell it's there. You know, it'll rot down, and you know, and it acts for good habitat for wildlife. Now, look, you've opened up a you've opened up a great deal of a forest that affects your wildlife. You're going to have to have places for your wildlife to nest. You're going to have to have places for them to raise their their young, places for them to hide where they ain't, haven't got anything right now. So, uh, you know, those tops and those limbs and stuff, they act as a great benefit to to not just nature, but, I mean, uh, to the soil itself. Well, those 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 stumps that are tipped over in particular, and I, I, I want oh, to the stumps. Yeah, yeah, you're talking exactly. about the stumps. The stumps well, but, but here's where I'm going with this. But you, you made a great point, and I know exactly where you're going. What I was going to say is, if I'm not mistaken, that underneath one of those stumps, you pulled out a bear cub a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. So, and and so I'm hearing you say foxes would live in those stump holes, mm -hmm. uh, raccoons, uh, possibly bear. But I mean, you you like you say, they got to have cover, right? They they've got to have somewhere to go. And you know, I know that the, some of them stumps is is uh, unsightly. The the mm -hmm. stumps itself, and some of them, you know, we may try going there with some machinery and. And you can just, you know, pull on the stump and they'll set right back down where they come from. Mm -hmm. You know, a bunch of the trees, a bunch of the trees, whenever you cut them and you stump them, the stump just falls right back down in the hole. You know, so uh, you may have uh, very little stumps showing, but if you do, you know, and, and, and they're left there, then, yeah, they, they provide dens for, uh, for animals and wildlife. Hey, we found when I went on a cub study, every every bear that we found that had cubs was in stump holes. In a stump and, hole. And we found three, and that, that's where they den at. They don't have any caves. I mean, you see on TV that you bear caves. And, right, well, right, here right. they don't have anything like that. And and uh, you could fit a 350-pound bear in a stump hole no bigger around a five-gallon bucket. I mean, it was amazing really? to me. Yeah, it was amazing to me how this bear got in there to have these, these cubs, but they got in there and, and they were up in this stump hole and, and you have foxes that, that, that raise their young. Uh, you have, uh, Oh, any kind of, of wildlife or bobcats. I mean, people don't want to hear it, but yeah, bobcats, they get in there and they raise their young. I mean, uh, that provides an active cover for all around. They get under the ground and it's kind of like a natural, natural den for them. Yeah, well, Todd, so. I tell you what, we will talk to you next time on this. Thank you for joining us. Hey, we'll Dennis. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.